Some of the events you're about to see in tonight's episode are extremely dangerous. They've been designed and supervised by professionals, and you should not try them at home. This is Paradise, a pristine island in Fiji. Five families, selected from thousands, have come here to compete in a series of competitions to win the deed to this Polynesian dream house. The object of the game? Stay out of last place and avoid elimination. The twist? They must share the house they hope to win. Five families, four bedrooms, one house. In the end, one family wins. But first, they must live together under one roof. Previously on Under One Roof. Is everyone just eating whenever and whatever they want now? Forced to share resources, tensions in the house started to rise. Wait a minute. You don't I, know what was speak, in their hearts. So, no, I don't. Then you in need to be heart. quiet. In front of the door. Mike Schofield masterminds a prank on the McCrays. Who did it? I, I don't know. Stirring accusations of racism. It's the same kind of foul stuff that we, sick white people would do. After enduring isolation, <laughs> the Pagani's luck changed and they began a winning streak. Pagani's first place. But the pressure was too much for the distals, and they were sent packing. Tonight, the slate is wiped clean as each family starts again with zero ribbons toward the house. Now, four families battle it out to remain under one roof. things have been going on. It's panning out kind of how Mike and I thought it might. Hey, we're still hanging by a thread, still uh, technically tied for last place, but uh, we're here another few days anyway. The distals are gone. Melissa and David and Lynn and Mike. See ya later. Kind of got four of us now. The house is less crowded. There's not a whole lot that's going on in the house right now. The Mike and Larry show, we'll see what happens with them. That kind of helped put the crates in front of the uh, McCray's door. They took it personal, which is a huge mistake in a competition like this, because I will t definitely take advantage of that. The tension I see building between families is us and the hat makers. I think they're starting to show their kind of colors. You know, when things aren't going their way, they get a little frustrated, a little pissy, a little complainy, a little bitchy. Yesterday, during the uh, spider, you know, competition. Uh, I heard a comment, Mark was saying, I'm about five minutes from going off. It'll be kind of interesting to see how things, uh, how things go. I don't think the distals would have... Gone the distance? Yeah, they wouldn't have gone for the juggler. <laughs> the ones that are left are a little bit more aggressive. So it's gonna get fun now. Yes, it is gonna get fun and a lot more tense. A lot of those times I can't relate to some of the families. When they say certain things like, oh, I, that was terrible because I didn't get this, it's like, don't even start because you don't know me, you don't know where I'm coming from, and you don't know how pathetic that sounds to me. We need this house, but then any of them can I even imagine. We are coming from a totally different perspective. We don't want this house because it's pretty. We want it because we need it. Mad and Marcello and Jonathan and Brittany are getting along really well, like really well. Oh, you don't want to pinch. No, it's definitely. I actually um, suggested to my kids that maybe they could uh, put themselves in a situation with their peer of the opposite sex and maybe learn a few things. 
my brother is totally working the angle on Marcella. <laughs> he's just trying to be all nice and smooth. To me, it seems like he's being stupid, but to her, maybe it's kind of working. I'm kind of glad that she's having this, like, Blue Lagoon romance. It's kind of sweet, and I don't mind a bit. The story that was going on was just, like, strategic place by the school fields. They disrespect families on so many levels, mm -hmm. if that's the case. You know how much that'll make Michelle? That'll make the Pagani so mad if he's doing that. Are you going straight up to Matt tonight? Yeah, in a straight deal up with it. I want to know straight up. Are you playing head games with my sister? What are you doing? And see, and we've heard that he's just doing it because he's been put up to You see how, yeah, you see how you have it. He's been yeah, put up to I'm, the, I'm, the type of, I'm the type of. If he's playing games, just say I'd appreciate it if he stopped playing games with my sister. I guess he likes my sister, but as soon as he messes up, that's when I get it. I think Brittany was uh, actually looking at John Carlo for a minute. But Jonathan becoming funner to pursue, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was your fault. Was, well, I think the budding romance between Jonathan and Brittany is kind of sweet, you know? It's kind of cute. I think as long as Jonathan can separate the emotional from the competition, I think there's no problem with it at all. The whole thing with John, it's a bunch of crap. He's gonna do some damage, man. He's gonna make he's gonna make me proud. No, that's Mom, nothing here is, you know, meant to really go out and get anybody. Nobody would have been picking on the McCrays if they weren't an easy target with the mind. I mean, look at them. They get so dysfunctional, and they fall apart, and they get all emotional and mad. If, if they wouldn't have ever shown that, I can guarantee you that would have never happened to them. It would have happened to us if we were showing that kind of weakness. Let's concentrate our thoughts on what we have to do to stay together as a family. My concern is that we as a family, you as my children, that we're able to come together as a unit right now and put our thoughts on what we have to do. I really don't care about that man. I really don't care about what he thinks or how he feels. I'm not done with the McCrae's yet. I'm still going to have to uh, put a little salt in the wound. I'll probably do that, be doing that tonight. And uh, then I'm going to move on to the hat makers, actually. a boat will pick you up. You should wear swimsuits and don't forget your flags. Today we're doing our competition. Whoever wins it should have like an opportunity to maybe better their uh, situation for the next uh, property quest. I don't know, you know, exactly what it is. I don't even try to guess anymore. We just have to be in our swimsuits, be ready to go. I'm a little anxious, but I know that some people are better in the water than others. That makes me a little bit nervous. Today, we are going to have another family face-off. If your family wins, you will get a choice between a great gift to enjoy when you return to the U.S. or an advantage item, which may or may not prove helpful in the next property quest. Now, if the winning family doesn't choose the advantage item, it will be given to the family in second place. Today's family face-off is called Turn Over a New Leaf. So you is going to get a rug like this, a mat. And the object is to turn the mat over from this ugly burlap side to this very beautiful Fijian side, with all four family members staying on the mat at all times. The trick is you have to do it out there on those rafts with all four family members staying on the mat at all times, never touching the raft or the water. If at any time any member of your family touches the raft or the water, falls in, leans on it, doesn't matter, I'm gonna blow the whistle, yell at you, you have to start over again in your starting position in the water by the raft. Remember, balance, coordination over strength. Good luck, everybody. Put the corner to use, just like fold it like a taco. Then stand on the bad side, the, the good side, and then flip it to one of you and make it straight. With all of us trying to stay to one side, oh. you flip it. Yeah, this oh. We're gonna have to do this. Be sensitive to people. Want to head out to your rafts? 
This was not going to be strength. It wasn't going to really be agility. It was going to be patience and communication. And it's two things which the Hatmaker family talked about before we came down here. All right, on my whistle, you begin. against us because Mark took up three-fourths of the mat, and me, my mom, and <laughs> my brother had to share the other fourth. I think the hardest part of the competition was staying on the ramp. Ooh, no! Step up, Marty. Step up, Marty. Okay. Step up, Marty. Yeah, okay. Pick up this foot and not there. There. I felt like the devil came out of me. I was so mean. Can you move that? Mom, OK, I'm trying to. Marcella, the only way to do it is one little inch at a time. I know you're trying, but just do it. Pagani, back in the water. Robin's hand was touching the raft. Can he call us? Yeah. Oh. Very careful. The hat usually have really good ideas, and I kept looking over to see what they were doing. And it didn't look like they were doing anything. When we got on the raft, my first deal was, I said, every time we fall in the water, it's taking energy out of us. And every time we have to climb back on, it's taking more energy. And every other family, we just tuned out. Oh my god, it seemed like we were standing on one part of a checkerboard square. It was so small. But we just sucked. Go for you, Back in the water. Gosh, it felt like I think we were out there, it seemed like for, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour, two hours? I'm not sure. We got stumped out there. We were just all looking at each other, like, who's got an idea? Who's got an idea? Here, do this. What? On my back. Who's on your back? Everybody. Then how are we gonna turn it over? There's no freaking place left to turn it over. I'm the crazy fellow. I'm pretty back in the water again. It was becoming obvious as time wore on that, you know, just glancing over at the hat makers, they were getting close. The Bacani seemed to know what they were doing, and we really were clueless. Go field foul, back in the water. I don't think any of us got impatient. We knew if we uh, started losing our cool and getting aggravated that we wouldn't stand a chance at winning, and we all communicated the whole, you know, the whole time. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it! Don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Hat makers have won. Slow and steady, but they did it. that close, didn't okay, argue dude. once, didn't argue once. We were never even close. <laughs> no, we weren't even close. <laughs> All right, you guys, excellent job. Hat makers, congratulations. Now, you have the option to receive an advantage item, which may or may not prove helpful in the next property quest. I want you to go ahead and open it up. All right. A rake. A rake. Just steal the anchor. It is a rake. Or you can choose this very nice gift, which will be waiting for you back in the States. Go ahead, John. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, oh, four tickets to the World Series. Four tickets to the World Series. Now, as you know, and you've been here before, you can only take one of them. And if you take the four tickets to the World Series, the rake will go to the Paganis. You know, if we really, okay, really we want them. Oh, I don't want the World Series tickets. Okay. Okay. Sit at home and I know, but that's what Daniel, that's Daniel's thing. So y'all skipped up my thing. <laughs> well. <laughs> I would love to go to the World Series. I mean, you know, baseball's my favorite sport. I, mean, I can't, I can't really express. I mean, that, it'd be, it'd be a great enjoyment to go. I mean, make me happy. Can you we'll take the rake. Yeah. We'll take the rake. Yeah, we'll take the rake. You're taking the rake? Yeah, sure? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> World Series tickets disappear. All right, that means nothing for the Paganis, and I will see you guys tonight at the campfire.
the hat makers keep winning, you know? I'm just getting pissed about that. That's, you know, it's getting old, you know, but I guess it might be a dis disadvantage in the future. kind of hit me last night. It was hard not having my dad here with us. You know, it would have been a great experience to be able to share with him. It was very difficult seeing the, uh, the other families with, with their parents. I think there's probably a lot of questions there, a lot of sadness. I think there's just anger, period, that his dad was taken from him. I don't think you've grieved enough. You've been too busy to grieve. I think that was part of the Almost the allure of coming down here was having that time with the boys. Do you think this trip has helped any? I don't know. Like the other day, Daniel just said that he felt like uh, Roy was still still around, was still here, you know, in spirit anyway. Yeah, and I noticed John carries <clears throat> that, that little green rosary. That was one of the things that, that you know, the funeral home had given as a remembrance item, and he keeps that with him. It's going to be okay. It's going to take some time, a lot of time. Letting it go piece by piece. So what, I'm kind of confused on your family tree thing there. What? what? With Mark? You could oh, see that he passed away last year. Oh, he did. And so Mark's kind of like a good friend then? Yeah, him and my mom have been real good friends for like 13 years now. I mean, they, I mean, they just... So they don't date, but they just oh, kind of... Oh, no. No? They never have. And, and, I mean, you can't really define a family by by blood. I mean, they could have brought two lesbian couples on here. I mean, I don't think you can really put a definition on family. So, I mean, well, that's good. Keep, you know what, sweet, keep that open mind because you'll go far with that. It's cool that you think like that. You know, your mom's doing a good job. It's disconcerting to walk around with other families and they're all going, oh, your husband this, your <laughs> wife that. How old are your boys? I'm like, they're not my kids. Yeah, nobody, they're great kids. Nobody's she's not asked my wife. me anything. I figured at least tonight when I said something about your roommate, they would. <laughs> something or I'm talking would come about up. my house. <laughs> like everybody keeps kind of <clears throat> sidestepping around it. I'm surprised they haven't said something about not being the traditional family. Family. It'll come up. I think at an important time when they, whoever's left, thinks it will matter, it'll come up. As the competition goes on, people are drifting further and further apart. I think everybody is being as hospitable as possible and as amiable as possible, but I see distances being created. What's up with the pranks? What's going on? You know what? Um, really, no agenda on that. It was just uh, did it for my, maybe my own fun. I don't know. Although I have to admit, it's fun to prank people to get a little irritated by it. So Larry's a good target? Yeah, I think so. Larry, is there an agenda? I think he has an agenda, but that's, I won't comment on that. That's his personal problem. I have an agenda, too. I want to win the house. My, my time and injury is not concentrated on him. I've treated oh his family God. with the utmost respect. I've done nothing harmful to him. And, and even after this, he could say anything he wants, and I'll still go, good morning, Larry, and I'll thank him for cooking, and I'll put his laundry in if I if I can move it along. You know, so. Well, then I want to. No, let your mother say it. Let your mother talk. Let your mother. Like, we don't want to say what, you know what? What he's actually doing is he's saying, I'll be nice. I'll do this for you. But when you're not watching, I'm going to do everything I can to annoy you and to provoke you. He could, Because he didn't know us like that, to put garbage in front of our door. And then for him to be there pretending that he had nothing to do with it. I hate to tell you, but about everybody in that's sitting here had something to do with that, actually. If you knew right. me, you wouldn't have done it. You don't well, come into it. You don't come into a situation. A what do you mean, lighten up? Lighten up how? Lighten up how? Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm gonna be very, very frank with you. If you want, to, let's be frank. I want nothing to do with you. <laughs> if, if 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 the snake is crawling on the ground, you don't pick it up so it can bite you. Okay, let's just do it this way. We're, we won't do any more pranks. 
it, it, I, I tell you right there, it was meant in a lighthearted way, and there is no agenda. If I've created that doubt in your mind, obviously that would be just me through time, maybe showing you that that's not my intent to be a mean-spirited person. That's the only thing I can do. All right, enough for now, enough. Go home, back to the house, get some sleep. I hope that that cleared the air and everybody can just kind of start over and go on because it's always stupid. It's distracting too much from everything. Yeah. While we're sitting here having all this positive thoughts about what we can do for the rest of the game, these people out here are squabbling over issues that mean nothing. It's a waste of time. If we use positive energy and keep ourselves out of that, we're much more focused than they are. Okay? Yeah. That's it. I don't have to say any more. I love you guys, and I'm really proud of everything that we've done so far. I love you, John. Thank you. I think we're making a mistake going back to the crate thing. It kind of happened. Thing, but it you, you, have, you have to understand that's where it started for us. You want to rehash things that already no, no, happened? No, 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 no. Regarding the garbage, when we express. Can I can make that clear real quick. I didn't do that. <laughs> You had no, nothing I didn't to do with that. the garbage in front of you. No, no I didn't. Actually, you, know you, know why, you know why I said that? Because the sitting at the table, you said, well, maybe I had something to do with it. I just, that was. Only, only I didn't. Over. I have no problem with you. Okay? I don't really believe that, but I hear no, you. No, if I was the type of person to harbor Wait, Larry. Stuff, Honey, you say you have no problem with it? I have no... Think about it. I because have, you just said you don't want anything to no, do with can you. I can I say what I, what I mean? Go okay? ahead. If we can clear the air, and start from this point. I mean, really? I mean, say something happens again, the first person that you're gonna probably think that did it is Mike. No, well, so I would you know what? That's a natural you know reaction. What? I would think that too. If we, if we clear the air here, it's cleared. Okay. <laughs> what do we say to them? Thanks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. The reason we're going against the McCrae's right now is just because it's just kind of fun. That's not over. We're not done just because they didn't like it. Man, I guess they were really, like, God, devastated. Why didn't they just get us back? <laughs> Man, dude, can you imagine them hanging out with our friends? Oh, my God. They and wouldn't last trouble. an hour. They're going to be in tears and stuff. <laughs> we're bad people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are staying up later and later, going off and doing their own thing at the hammock and whatnot, especially when the lights go off. So there's a little concern, but we're going we're going to address it. Who is warm my New Year? Don't. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to eat my lips. Mm -mm. I definitely have some strategies in the making. I just kind of continue to mess with people a little bit. I'm not done with the McCrae's yet. Nothing too big, nothing too uh, malicious or mean. Just gonna maybe take a flag or maybe uh, tape it to a tree. Me and Brittany were on the dock and I saw him hanging out of the tree taping it. <laughs> Can you come out over here? Yeah, we saw, we saw you do it. Is he going to say anything? No, he won't. I just told him not to. He'll tell like, his mom? No. From their first reaction of hating the crates so much, I thought it was stupid to do it again and just try to piss him off. <sighs> it's going to be so much more crap tomorrow. Who okay. cares? Just do it like we did last time. Let Dad talk. It adds more flair to the competition. <clears throat> I think they're going to be the next family off. John, I don't want him to get too attracted to, to Brittany um, because, because I, th I think that family's a tricky family. I, you know, I want him to strike before they have her strike. She tried to make the damn girl fall in love with him. She's 15. It's not harder for 15 to fall in love with him. Dude, 
that you can than when, than when, than when we need to, dog. That's the only way that's going to be able to. The family, I mean, I kind of put some stress in the family, dog. Just get her in the heart. This morning, our flag was hide up into the upper branch of a tree with duct tape. Well, it was obvious who did that because there was only one family here with duct tape. Well, I'm assuming they know that I took their flag. I mean, I would, I would assume me if I was them. Just because Mike himself didn't get to finish being a kid doesn't mean that he has to act like one all the time. I'm more mature than he is. Isn't this stupid? Misery loves company. Well, I'm not mine. You get no company here. <laughs> We have someone here who thinks they know how to push my buttons. I think he's just trying to do things just to irritate Larry, just to see if Larry will do something back. You know, but it's not working. It's having the opposite effect. It, it just doesn't matter. It's a flag. It's a flag. We're not going to repay evil with evil. We're not going to do the same thing that he does. It's not in our character. No, I'm not going to give that jerk the satisfaction of observing. <laughs> now, I've just heard that the flag is no longer in the tree. I don't know how it got down. I think Michael Schofield did it. You're not going to pick it up? Um, I don't we'll, pick it up? We'll deal with it when we get to that. The flag's not my concern. I didn't put it there, and I'm not concerned about it. Oh, so if I don't pick it up, you're not going to pick it up? Like I said, the flag's not my concern. It's your flag, though. So how willing you, uh, how far you want to go in principle? You know, I don't want to waste my time on little petty things like that. The flag is down now, and for whatever reason the person put it up, I don't think uh, it worked. I wish he'd get back at us. I wish he'd do something. No, he's no, he's teaching us. No, because he's he's a he's an upstanding citizen. I don't think. So let's all four of the Schofields go over and pick up the flag. How about you just go pick it up, because he hates you the most. Yeah, he does. Well, what's the plan, Dave? I'll go pick up the flag. I don't care. I actually like him. OK. He pontificates a little too much. All right. Mike listened to me for once and went and put the flag back. And by doing that, he was just telling Larry that, you know, I'm going to take my game and go home. You're no fun to play with. And that's when everyone started ignoring us as kind of a family, and you could kind of feel the tension, which I kind of thought was kind of fun. Today, we kind of stayed away from the Schofields. You know, they want attention. That's how they thrive. That's how they work. We kind of ignored them every time they talked to us. It kind of sucked, because I didn't do anything with the flagpole, and that was all kind of on my dad. And I, I don't really like being like ignored in a house or whatever. I really don't like when people don't like me. They're looking all upset because nobody likes. I'm just like, well, what did you expect? If you keep doing that, you know, just like, oh yeah, we love you guys. You guys only put trash in front of our door and tied our flag to a tree. I can't apologize for my dad's actions. You know, yeah, we're the same genes and we're we're the same. I'm um, his son and stuff, but that's not me. You know. My opinion of Michael has probably affected my opinion of his kids. I mean, I told you, her dad is into psychological stuff. I think taking control and being the first one to kind of cut it off will definitely play with her head, because I think she really does like you. So you just deal with it. Just be aware of what's happening. That's all I want to tell you, you know? OK? Everybody, come on over. Oh. Grab your flag poles. Let's go. My gut feeling is that this property quest is going to be something to do with some kind of fear. I think it's going to be a mental thing this time around. All right, tonight's a property quest. The winners will receive ribbons. The family with the fewest ribbons at the end of the next property quest will have to leave the island forever. <laughs>
So this property quest is crucial to determining the second elimination. But there's a twist. The family with no ribbons at the end of this property quest will have the opportunity to face isolation and earn as many as two ribbons. That means a family might actually benefit from isolation. But trust me, it won't be easy. Fire is one of those things that inspires fear in most of us. Peggy Dillon's an expert fire walker, and tonight she's going to teach you guys how to walk on fire. Everybody, this is Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Tonight is not a trick. Tonight has to do with who you are inside of you and how you guys work together as a family. The class is easy, but I was scared because I have never even thought about walking on fire. How are you guys feeling about this fire walking thing? I don't like it. I don't like it. You don't like it? Like, I, I've always wanted to do something new. Uh -huh. It's not this. <laughs> Bianca, I didn't think it was safe for her to do it. I was really, really, really worried about her. Peggy was teaching not so much the fire wall, but focusing at a goal and going towards that goal. Take an arrow, and I'm going to pass around pens. I want you to write on the arrow some of the fears that surface when you think about moving forward in your life. Some of mine were fear of changing, maybe fear of um, being alone. I wrote on my arrow, I have a fear of my mom and my brother dying. You were to write those down, and then you were going to break those, kind of like breaking free and going to a new level. I think she was mostly teaching a life lesson as opposed to actually fire walking. It goes right in here in that soft notch. <laughs> yes, yeah, in a strong position. You're going to take three breaths. On the third one, you're going to hold your breath, and then you're going to step forward, breaking through your fears, moving towards your goal. Once I broke the arrow, I did feel something different. I mean, I, I broke an arrow with my neck, you know. Who the hell does that? A lot of people took their arrows home. I just left mine there. I was like, you know, I'm done with it. I don't even need to pick it up or take it with me. I'm over it, done. Tonight's property quest is a Fijian firewalk. Here's how it's going to work. When I say go, the first member of your family starts over the coals. When they've completed the walk, the second member of the family goes. The family that has the most members walk across the coals wins the property quest. Good luck. The firewalk is 100% different than any of the other competitions that we've had. It was definitely more internal, it was more emotional. Hatmakers, you got the advantage item at the last reward match, which means you're gonna get a rake. You can take away some of the coals, but no more than two feet worth from the course. You got it, All right, Hatmakers, are you ready? And go. Go. Hatmakers, you made it. You're in the game. You guys ready, McCrae's? And go. McCrae's, you made it. You're also in the game. Walking through the fire was a sense of accomplishment because there were things that I really wanted to, that I really want to get through and it was like a representation of those things that are hard for me to get through. Go Fields, are you ready? Ready. And go. Go Fields, you made it as well. We were psyched from, from the very beginning, whether it was 20 feet, 30 feet, 10 feet, we, was, we were gonna keep going no matter what. If you freak out now, we're gonna, we okay. might as well not do it. 
secret. You can do it. I was you worried for Bianca. I was scared that she would stop in the middle or that she wouldn't do it properly. And I just felt like it wasn't the right thing to force her to do it. Okay, Pagani family, remember, when I say go, the clock begins. You guys ready? Go. Go, George. Go, George. You did it. Yes, Should I push her to do it, or should I not push her? If I don't push her, then, you know, we would lose that event. But listen, listen to me. I I'm promise. I'm going to stand up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Focus. 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 You don't feel anything. Come on, do it for the family. You can do it. Don't think about the fire. Look at Daddy. Look at Daddy. Everyone said, come on, do it, do it. I got so annoyed, I just had to do it. Paganis, you've all made it, and we have a tie. Are you OK? You are, aren't you? I'm kind of glad I got to do fire walking. It was an experience of a lifetime, I mean. I've never even dreamed of that. Four-way tie for first place. We're going to have a tiebreaker. In that circle are six Fijian marbles. The object is to hit one or more marbles out of the circle. Standing behind this line, you need to flick it in the Fijian marble style, which is using your middle finger, pulling it back. See, I did very poorly. The first family to knock one or more marbles out of the circle wins first place. The last family faces the possibility of isolation. Now, the order you'll be playing in was determined by a random drawing. Schofields, you guys are up first. Ready? Let's play marbles. Nobody was good at them. We all sucked. It was, it was really hard. That was the hardest game I've ever done in my life. I was harder than the raft. Yeah! Yeah! McCrae's, you guys are in first place. We knew that it was important for us to win. Psychologically, we needed that win. And strategically, we needed that win. Second place goes to the Schofields. Tie a flag to a tree. You know, big deal. We're still cheering, and we're still egging, every, you know, wanting everybody to do well. We go up, and people wouldn't even clap for us. Two families left. Paganis, you guys are up. I was very worried about going to isolation again. I'm never happy unless we're in first. We don't take losing well. We're highly competitive, and we want to stay on top. I was watching what everyone was doing. And I thought, you don't just flick your finger, you got to flick your whole hand. And I told George, he was right in front of me, I said, you know, I think you have to flick your whole hand. The hat makers came in fourth on this tiebreaker thing. And uh, I know I can speak for all our family in saying that it was, it was kind of exciting for them to come in fourth. Hat makers, fourth place, no ribbons. You can be the best sport in the world, and deep down, you, you hate losing. So, I mean, it, it wasn't a good feeling. OK, hat makers, as you know, you're in last place with no ribbons. Now, I'll give you a chance to make that up, but that requires you going into isolation. Isolation means you spend the night together as a family in an undisclosed location. You guys want to do that? We go. We don't go. We don't have any food with us. We have nothing. <laughs> Don't matter to me. I could have walked over there and strangled both of them. 
and I was not going to let them get away with that. I'm game. I mean, I, I'd do it. I don't think we came all this way to turn around and walk off from it. But if that's what you guys want to do, I mean, that's just, I'm one vote out of four. It really, I don't care. John, you want to do it? You got it? my answer. You, I want to understand. Yeah. It. Okay, then I want to do it. Okay. All right, you gonna do it? Yeah. All right, everybody else, you're going back to the house. Everybody have a good night. You guys are coming with me. Rock, bye, Michelle. It. Thanks. Bye. I'm so glad you did that, Bianca. Yeah. I really am. Bye, bye, Mark. Bye, bye guys. Bye, bye, Michelle. Bye. See you guys. Bye, Daniel. Thanks, Robin. All right, hat makers. Let's take you into isolation. All right, watch where you're walking. It's dangerous in here. Listen, hear that? You hear it? Yeah, bats. Four foot wingspan. Okay, hat makers, welcome to your treehouse isolation. If you guys can stay here till tomorrow morning, you get one ribbon. There's no leaving this treehouse. You're also going to get a brain teaser. Out of these pieces, got to construct a four-sided pyramid. If you can solve this brain teaser, you'll get a second ribbon, helping you to avoid elimination. Enjoy the night. Watch out for the bats. We got up in that tree house and kind of looked around. And you know, the first thing is, OK, we can't get down. So who's going to figure out this brain teaser? All of us. We were tired and very hungry. And it was dark out here, and the bugs. He said, a four-sided pyramid. Daniel and Mark were babies. They were like spoiled little babies. I don't even know where to begin with this thing. This is just about useless. We've been on top like three times now. It does not feel good to be where we are. We're not sore losers, but we take losing hard. It came down to us and either the McCrays or the Paganis as the last two families and we lost to one of them, I wouldn't take it as hard. I would, yeah, I, I wouldn't either. You know, they're good people, and and it's just hard when you're dealing with somebody that's I just want, not yeah, like that. You don't want to lose to somebody that has no heart. You know, all their, their morals are questionable. I just don't like anything that Michael stands for. I just feel sorry for their kids, man. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, uh, Larry's kids are going to really appreciate when something does happen, or when, <clears throat> or when you know, he passes away, they're, they're going to appreciate how affectionate he is mm -hmm. with them. And right now, it might not seem that big of a deal. And it's because it's an everyday thing. Yeah. But but when it's gone, I think they do appreciate I it mean, right I now. mean, what I would kill I to they know. have dad back, you know, and to say, no, I love you one more time. Mm -hmm. Real lucky. Stay tuned for scenes from the next episode. Next time on Under One Roof. As the hat makers struggle in isolation, this is useless. Tensions between the families rise. What comes around, goes around. You know what? I don't give a shut up. A secret is revealed. You're talking about my dad. What? And tough challenges eliminate another family. That's gonna be a lot of competition, you know?